Hey everyone, just opened up the back of the toilet, and you see that? I touched the edge. That right there is all iron oxidizing bacteria that has built up. Even with all that iron bacteria there, we get the light on. It still flushes clean. Maybe you'll see the particles I just knocked up right there, but yeah, it still flushes clean. It's just stuck to everything. No need to clean it or anything, but I think it'll be super fun to clean it and watch it all come in here orange. I just cleaned the toilet, but yeah, it leaves a little stain there. We have very hard water. Hard water means that there's tons of minerals in it, including iron. I don't have a water softening system because it doesn't really bother me that much. Don't think it's worth the price of one. So every now and then we have some discolored water if it rains really hard because we have a well but that's only a couple days out of the year after big storms so this stuff here is called iron bacteria the well drilled into the ground outside about 200 feet has metal um, outer wall and if you're not home for a while the water starts to come out very orange because this bacteria starts eating it it's fine to eat you can drink it it won't hurt you at all it just likes to eat iron it'll eat metal parts and it also does this stuff. But I just wanna see, can we clean this off? Let's see. Is it fairly easy to clean? You know what? I'm gonna shut the water off, flush it, do it so I don't make a lot of splashes. And we're gonna see how nasty it is when we flush it. Let's see, can we clean this up? I'm sure there's some kind of chemical you can use that would get this right off. I'm just curious how easily we can get it off. I also have a toilet looking brush that I can put on a drill. It's good for cleaning parts of the car. That might work in here pretty well. There's no need to do this. I'm just, it looks like something fun to do. If I wanted to get every nook and cranny, I'd be in there for a while. A couple of flushes, that'll be all out. see what happens now turn the water on we're gonna let it fill back up that's stirring it up even further give it a second and it's all filled up looks like nasty nasty sewage water now down below let's give it a flush it honestly doesn't look that dirty I thought it was gonna like be visibly coming out of the slots barely anything Looks like a very dissolved poop. A couple more flushes, that'll clean it up. But if I come back here in a few months, that'll all that grime will be back around there again. I don't know why. I thought that would have been made a cooler. But today, I was looking in the toilet tank for the first time in like a year. Because I just installed this bidet, which should really help with the septic system. There's nothing wrong with my septic system or anything, but the average household will be having their septic system pumped every three to five years, the average household. The average house has a 1,000 gallon tank, some have 500, little houses will have 500, a bigger family might have a 1,500, but if you have eight people living with you, you're probably gonna pump it every year or two. If you just, like me, there's only one person or two people living here now, there is no need to pump it that often, maybe I can get away at five years, my septic system's only been running now for two years. The first two years living here, it wasn't working. I was pooping in the woods. But this year, I'm going to have it pumped even though it's been two years because I'm just curious what's in it. But now, with this bidet, I'll probably be able to get away with maybe eight years without ever getting that thing pumped because the biggest silt maker in there is the toilet paper. I go through a roll of toilet paper in this house between the two of us, probably one roll every other day. And that's hundreds of them throughout the year. Yes, it gets broken down a ton by the bacteria in the septic tank, but still, now you're not wiping your butt with toilet paper. You're just using the toilet paper to dry your butt, and you don't have to flush it. You could just throw it in the trash, but I'm still going to flush it because that's kind of nasty. So let's flush this one more time. See how many times it takes for this to get clean. Now that that tank is actually going, the pressure will be low, but when the pressure gets back going, this is how this works. 
see it down like that. You can help clean the toilet bowl out. But if you turn it all the way, it's gonna spray up in my face. Let me put something there so it can't spray. What can I put there while I give this example? Hmm. Maybe the toilet tank. Put that there. Let's see how it's gonna go up now. Yeah, it's spraying up into the lid. But if your butt was there, it would clean your butt actually very, very well. Then you just dry your butt with the toilet paper. And that's the point of this. No sediment, no extra BS going out to the septic tank. And you could probably go twice as long without cleaning the septic tank because the only things going in the septic tank are going to be your own waste and maybe a little bit of vegetable matter from the kitchen sink and yeah just food sometimes now it's basically clean there's just a little bit of oily matter floating one more flush and that'll be completely clean again so we did actually get it off pretty decently there yep pretty decently how old is this toilet when was this made Usually inside the lid they say, it's got to say somewhere. Couldn't have been more than five years ago. Go ahead and put that lid back on. I just cleaned the toilet very well before installing that. Now that's not poop even though it looks that gross. The person I had a couple years ago helped me refinish this bathroom. Drip stain on it. They didn't put any tarps down and this stuff's very hard to get off it's the stain and the same person who did that did this horrible job see this here they caulked with white caulk if anything they should have used clear but the thing is they were so sloppy that's caulk right there that's not a mess up in the stain i did the stain afterwards myself but that right there was yeah it's real hard to get that off but no, it's not that big of a problem anymore put the books and stuff back up here Everybody poops, North Main Woods, Ghost Town Book, things to read while pooping, swimming holes of the White Mountains, wet wipes. That's what I use to just clean the toilet, because when I removed the old seat, that was pretty nasty, the part you couldn't clean beneath the bolts. All right. Let me show you how this thing works with it open. I'll spray it. I'll just sweep it up after. Down, and then a thing's gonna pop up, out. Yeah. Woo! Ooh, better get the towel. And the shower curtain will dry in just a little bit. Throw that in there, and we're good. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. Alright everyone, now it's time for another little project, also here in the bathroom. So, right here, there's not a lot of space here but this little shelf. This little shelf was always here, even when I moved into the house. See, it's got that little hole in the back for an electrical plug right there. Which used to line up with that plug, but I completely rewired the room and I put it at a different height. So it no longer can line up, and this was where you... There was a couple hair dryers in there. And that's one of the hair dryers. No one uses it. So this little shelf, I think I'm going to move maybe to the basement bathroom. I saved this one. I didn't throw it out. It was a hoarder's house originally. So we're going to remove this. We're going to go outside now to the garage after we visit the Home Depot. We're going to build a shelf that fits perfectly from here to the toilet with deeper shelves, more space, and... We'll see how it goes. I want to make it exactly the same height as this. Waterproof it a whole ton when we're done making it. Because there will definitely be splashes. I'm always having to clean the wall. 
That's why I always use glossy or semi-gloss paint. Never flat paint, because flat paint gets really dirty, but you can clean glossy walls so much better. All right, everybody, it's been about two days since we built the shelf. Let me turn the light on. It's been sitting here in the kitchen now, drying, after putting a whole bunch of clear polyurethane on it. The walls have three coats, the shelves have three coats, it feels nice like glass. But the top, I put five coats. It leveled out all the screw holes, leveled that out, and now if you can see the shiny glare of the lights... Feels like glass, it's completely dry. Nice. Every time I've used polyurethane before, it took a, a while to dry, but I think because we're running the wood stove, it dried extremely fast in the house as the wood stove will suck literally any moisture out of it. So this should make a lot more space there in the bathroom than what's already there. Put a little bit of trim around it, made the bottom shelf a couple inches off the ground. Just makes it look a little more fancy and more like a real piece of furniture. But I think making it glossy came out really nice. I was originally going to stain it dark like the woodwork in there before it. But it'll make the room look bigger having this thing being light colored. Now we got to unstick it from the ground. Usually I'd stain and stuff outside. But it's winter so we did it inside because it's too cold out. Right now, I think it's like seven degrees. And look at that, that's polyurethane right there. That's not the sheathing, but I can just, with a box cutter, trim that off. Won't notice it. The back part of it, I did not stain because it's against the wall. Doesn't matter. And yes, a wood stove also helps with not having as many fumes in the house when doing that because as that thing off gases, it's still off gassing even though it's hardened right now because it hasn't fully cured yet. This I'm noticing, the vapors come down here. Don't want to do it in this room because it's technically flammable, but not from up there. This room, is, it smells like burning diesel when you're actually freshly painting because all the vapors are coming in here. Like, if anyone's ever done oil-based painting, polyurethaning, even spraying WD-40 in their house, and then they go and they light the stove, whether it be electric or gas, you can smell something weird burning. Even though you can't smell it anymore, the off-gassing is still in the air, and any combustion point will burn off that stuff in the air, and you can smell it when that's happening. All right, and now we're underneath it. Put some pads on so it doesn't scratch up the floor. That stuff all picked away pretty easily. 
the stuff that was stuck down to the ground. That fit actually perfectly just by a hair. It squeezed in there perfectly actually. But what I am thinking about doing is maybe where that's hitting, once this fully cures, cracking this piece off, cutting the top inch of that off so it can butt exactly up to the sink, maybe this side, make a notch for the lid there, then it'll fit. Well, actually that side's unnecessary, but maybe that side to get rid of that little gap. But it's really nice now. Now we can start loading things on it. And for now, I put this shelf down here into the basement. This is the basement bathroom. We've got the utility sink. Toilet with eyeballs. The floor is not exactly straight, so I'm going to put shims to make this thing straight. It can be toilet paper storage. Floor is not straight because that's the outline of the old vanity that used to be here. Because this used to be a used to be a tub here, but I put it back as a unfinished room right here with the wood stove. Just thought it was better like this. So instead of throwing that out, it's here for now. I think we can use that for some sort of storage down in the downstairs bathroom. But the upstairs bathroom now has a good amount of storage with that shelf. I could have bought a shelf like that, maybe even for the same price. Could have got one maybe at a thrift store. But now it fits exactly the right height with the sink, which is perfect. Probably wouldn't just find that out in a store. And also it was a good woodworking project. And I got to teach her how to use power tools, which she's never used before, which was good to do too. So I've been heating now with the wood stove for a couple weeks straight. I just woke up after a long sleep. It wasn't completely off, but it was cooled down. Now it's just catching back up again. See, I can keep my hand on it for a couple of seconds, but it'll get burning hot. Just give that another half hour. Got all the wood. Last night actually got down to 7 degrees. That was the coldest night of the year so far, but unfortunately this week we're going to have a 45 degree day. It's going to get nice and warm again and rain, so the little couple inches of snow we have and are expecting will be gone. I hope we get a whole ton of snow. I want some deep snow so I can build a snow fort, dig out a big hole and go hot tent camping, something like that, but till it gets cold, I'm not going to do that. I want there to be a whole bunch of snow. But I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.